Do all students have to fill out the FAFSA? Even if they don't want to apply for financial aid, this is a question we are going to answer today. Financial aid expert Kathy Mueller joins us now. We're going to talk about student loans and debt. We're also taking your questions. All you have to do is text them to 336 379 5775. All those questions are anonymous, and this is your chance to get some free help. All right, so we are going to kick it off with what has changed with the FAFSA application. I'm sure it's different since I've applied, so let's break that down. Sure, it has changed a lot. Uh, the big change is it's going to be a lot easier for everyone to complete the FAFSA. It's a lot shorter. There are fewer questions and they're going to be pulling your information from the Internal Revenue Service. So you won't have to fill out as much financial information. Also, uh, one of the other great things about the new FAFSA is it's going to be um, more people eligible for uh, need-based aid. So they've increased the income protection allowance with the new FAFSA. So more people will be eligible for uh, Pell Grants and need-based aid like that. Uh, the other thing is that you probably okay. heard uh, the FAFSA is just now available. They released it on December 31st. Normally the FAFSA is out on October 1. So if you haven't uh, completed the FAFSA, you're still okay. Uh, it's plenty of time to complete it for 24-25. Next year they'll get back on the regular schedule. Okay, so then my next question for you, what is a common mistake being done on the new FAFSA and what should we do to avoid this? Okay, so the mistake that has happened with the FAFSA is related to the income protection allowance. The good thing is that there won't be a lot of people affected by it. There will be some. Okay. Uh, if you have an income of around sixty dollars to $70,000, uh, the income protection allowance in the legislation was set at $60,000, but the Department of Education was also supposed to adjust it for inflation, which we know we've experienced in the last couple of years it was not adjusted for inflation. So if you have an income of around 60 to $70,000 and you fill out the FAFSA, and when you get that financial aid offer from your school or your college or your university, and you're not sure if you're getting all the aid that you should have, you might wanna contact the financial aid office uh, at that institution, the school, the college or university, and make sure uh, that you're getting all that need-based aid that you're eligible for. Now, the Department of Education might correct the FAFSA, uh, so uh, hopefully this is gonna be taken care of, but we don't know for sure yet. I like that. Well, the other thing too, you know, you have to have a FSA ID. How do you create one of those for the application? So the FSA ID is really your username and password for your account at studentaid.gov. Uh, they call it an FSA ID, but they're going to be moving away from that and just calling it your account at studentaid.gov. So it's your username and password. Some important things to remember about that. You need to set that up before you try to complete the FAFSA. The reason for that is because they want to verify your information. Uh, the Department of Education will uh, take that information that you enter when you set up your account at studentaid.gov and match it up with the Social Security Administration. So you need to have that done before you try to fill out the FAFSA. That will take about three to five days, so not very long, but go ahead and set up that FSA ID, that username and password at studentaid.gov, so uh, you can complete the FAFSA in about three to five days. Amazing, this is all super helpful information. Again, you can text us your questions at 336-379-5775. We're gonna be right back and continuing to answer your questions for FESPA.